She got masculine because she had to become masculine in order to deal with the rape, the abuse, the domestic violence, the, the disappointments wow. that men had in her life, and also raising those kids and have to take care of herself all at the same time. The black woman has been the be all in all in our community for half of a century. And now we want to turn around and say because she didn't do it perfectly enough or remain feminine enough when she had to absorb our responsibilities. It has nothing to do with whether or not she did it perfectly or not enough. Not what we're talking about. We're talking about the way institutions and policies have been used to undermine black men and to frame family and buffer class status at their expense. See, by framing it in this simplistic way, it's easy for even a five-year-old to say, wow, yeah, black men are horrible. They're, they're trifling. He's right. Very easy. Easy to consume, easy to digest. Reality isn't always easy. Matter of fact, most of the time it isn't. It just, it just, it's just a matter of how much you include to discuss. Plus her own, that's insensitive and disingenuous. I, I don't, I don't yeah, believe. So. Yeah, I can't. I, mean, I guess I, I do I, understand. What, I understand what you're saying. I'm not taking you nothing back from that. To tell me something that we've done systemically to combat that. Me, uh, there's, there you are, there said are, me and her. I don't care about there, me. And her. There, but there's plenty women of women and men. Mm -hmm. Women and men as a group in right. the community. You understand? Right. We gave birth to that. You see? So you say she had a couple kids already because she got she met men. She probably thought they was good. Some of them, they she left knew they, her. She knew they wasn't good. You don't know that, bro. See that? See that? He, he was quick to say they thought they was good. You know, what he's doing there is he's giving a, an innocent narrative, right? And I'm more than sure there are plenty of women that got in that scenario. They met a cat, they thought was good, whatever. I'm not saying that doesn't exist. But I'm also adding what he's not willing to acknowledge. That there are women that took advantage of the fact that they had policy to their benefit and that black men didn't took advantage of the fact that they can make the sole decisions about family formation, even with men that they knew didn't want families, didn't matter if they wanted them or not. They took advantage of their status at the expense of men because they wanted what they wanted. I can't tell you how many of my students over the last 25 years, young women, had babies with men that they basically chose, even though they didn't want to say it. These women been on birth control for a decade, but they all of a sudden got pregnant by the one dude that they really liked. Really? So they didn't have any say in it. It just happened, right? Okay. That's interesting. That's interesting. You knew they wasn't good. You're making you know assumptions saying? about her. Would you make the same assumption if she was a white woman? Yes, I would. So yeah. you say. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes, and don't get it twisted. White men are dealing with that too. The only difference is that over the last number of decades, they're... Their collective wealth status it, it kind of insulated them from some of this. In other words, when I first ran into uh, white men's rights activists, one of the things I noticed is that they didn't start up in the way I thought they should have until much later. Black men had been complaining for decades about uh, divorce, about child support, and that's because their feet were closer to the ground, right? You make $15,000 a year, somebody take half of that, you're going to feel it. White men in many ways had more resources. So these cats would get divorced. And, and I've, I've read some of their stories, right? They get divorced and then they go start another family. The first family, the mother's conditioned the kids to hate them. Now this broke many a white dude's heart, but he moved forward and built another family. And he worked, right? Worked around the clock. I'm not saying some of them don't work for their money. I'm not saying that they have more inherited wealth, but some of them do invest and so on and so forth. But in order to achieve at a certain level, you gotta put a certain number of hours in, right? And these cats would talk about how much they were working before they lost several families. Had kids that hated them, but everybody had a handout waiting for them to pay for college, pay mortgages, pay child support, pay alimony. It would take until their second or third divorce before these dudes would get pissed off and say, okay, what the fuck is going on here? And this was in the 2000s, the early 2000s, when I started to hear more white men grumbling after their second and third divorces about whether or not something was going on. Black men figured it out, I think, much earlier. We just didn't have the means to respond in any kind of coherent, uh, large-scale way. But brothers, you know, and the reason we figured it out wasn't because, you know, we're some special magical Negroes. It was because we were closer to the ground. You don't have to lose as much. You got $5 in your pocket and somebody takes out two fifty, dollars you are going to feel it. If you make $100,000 and somebody takes fifty, you're going to be pissed. But you're not worried about where your next meal is coming from. Black men figured this shit out. White dudes took a little longer because they had more resources. Their feet weren't as close to the ground, but they felt it and they're feeling it and they are pissed. But the thing is, and I've said this before, 
no group of men were really prepared for their women to call a battle, call war against them. No, no group of men were ready for that. None of them were. None of them were. And so now you have men trying to figure out. And, and I think what I can say at this point is men have figured out a variety of options in response. 30, 40 years ago, men had caught off guard, just getting picked off left and right. Now you have a collective of men that are figuring out how to deal with warfare from the women that they've grown up with or spent years laying next to. You know what that has to do to you to figure out how to go to war with someone who's waged war on you but sleeps right next to you and will take your fucking kids and half of what you have out of whim. It took decades for men to figure out how to respond, but men did. And this is why people are freaking the fuck out because they don't like the responses. Of course, this is this has become what I call a cold war, right? But it is what it is. And men are responding and people don't like it, especially post pandemic in a crumbling economy where men are refusing to be resources. See, the weight of men's decisions are being felt more than they ever have been because men decided to respond at this juncture. You told us you didn't need us. You told us you didn't want us. Clearly, you still wanted sperm. Clearly, you still wanted resources from us at your whim. We're withdrawing all of that at the worst time possible. That's what it's taken. But don't get it twisted. This is not limited to black America. We're the canaries in the coal mine, but we ain't the only ones going through this shit. We're just closer to the ground than other groups economically.